in this video I'm going to tie this slide and I'm going to explain why I tie this slide this way and how I would fish it. Please stay until the end of the video because I will explain some techniques how I was using this one and I actually have some videos about fly fishing in China, you're nipping in China, uh, how I'm using similar flies as this one in some deep pools. Uh, if you like this video please consider subscribing, uh, share it, comment, recommend it to your friends. Uh, it will help my channel grow and uh, I hope it will help people learn some things new. So without any further ado let's get into tying. Uh, when it comes to materials and stuff we need is some thread. I'm, I'm using a 70 denier UTC but you can use any thread you like. Uh, try not to use anything too thick because buildup is not something you want to do, deal with. You may need a marker because I'm using green thread. Um, you definitely need a web finish tool. And you need some pheasant tail. Uh, you need some wire. Choose your own color that you like. And that's more or less it. Uh, for the hook I'm using a copy of the Hiku hook. And I'm using two tungsten beads. So first of all I'm going to tell you how I'm going to attach this jig of bead. I'm going to use this smaller slot, smaller hole, just go with your hook through it. So you get this indent uh, facing rear part of the hook. Now I'm using purple slotted bead and just attach it like, like you would regularly do it through the smaller hole and then uh, just slide it towards the jig of bead. Now place your hook in the vise with those tungstens and obviously from the beginning this is going to be a fly that you're not going to use every day or every time everywhere. It's a quite specific one. It's intended to be used for deeper spots or faster spots or both. Uh, use it with thinner tippets but not too thin like nine, like 8x, 7x like that's maybe too thin. 6 or 5x is I think perfect for this. Uh, if you need to go deeper, just extend your tippet even beyond what you think you need. Uh, try to start your thread just next to the tungsten. And what you need to do first is to uh, fix those tungstens in position. The reason why I place this uh, jig of bead like this is because the slotted will fit into this indent here and it will actually prevent it from spinning around the hook. Now it's not, uh, it's very important how you place both beads. So this one has to be with indent facing, facing rearwards and the slotted one, use this gap, face it downwards and then pull your nail underneath so you can push everything together like so. Now build a dam, thread them here and build it sort of uh, uh, like with taper because if you just build it here like so uh, the, the thread will slip down and slip down and it will create some loose points soft points underneath so make sure that this uh, slot is facing up down position like upwards and downwards with uh, I showed you how so like you can see it from this part this side how it should look like so push it with your thread you can also use your thread down the slide it down the bead like so and it will create uh, it will slide just where it's supposed to slide and it will actually push those beads now as you can see they're fixed into position and you don't need to do anything else take a piece of wire attach your wire at the beginning now I like to attach wire just facing myself on the side as you can see sorry for the bob bobbin actually I will repair it now so let's go create taper but you can create taper later now I need some pheasant tail so just choose a couple of barbules here align the tips I'm using like five or six so let's count those it's five that's fine now Place them perpendicular to the stem and then take them off. And by doing this, 
you'll have those tips aligned. Now, measure the tail. I don't like too long tail, I just prefer to have it like this. Spin the thread so you can have thinner thread, basically. As you can see here, it's not too thick. If, I, if it lays flat, then it's going to be too wide. Tine point, point is going to be too wide. Now, uh, deal with this taper now. So create this taper a little bit, so you can see that I'm working on the middle of the fly, well, the rest of the body here, and now in the opposite direction than you were mounting the thread, mount those pheasant tail fibers, slightly overlapping them. Sometimes you can just twist them up and then tie them around the hook. It's also doing, it's also a very good thing to do. Now, just one, two, and then locking turn in front, and you can do just one more if you prefer it. Like one or two over the material and one or two uh, in front of the material are just plenty, uh, because you don't need, it's not, this material is not fighting you, so you don't need too many uh, wraps to lock it in place. Now, do your first wrap like this, holding everything together, and then, just rip your fly using the same angle or a little bit increasing it so you can increase those gaps and then just with a couple of wraps secure the wire. Now this may look like a finished fly and it may be finished fly to be honest. It's going to be very functional because this fly is simple but it follows some certain function. The function is to go deep, go fast, and fish deep deep holes and fast spots. So everything here is to do that. There is no excess material. Now, just for the sake of durability of the fly, do small web finish knot. Now, the reason why I'm us using the thicker wire than usual, you can compare it to the wire I'm usually using on my nose, it's a little bit thicker, is because it's more durable. This is going to bounce on the bottom. You need something durable. It's going to hit these, uh, so the color will not stay for long, definitely, but it's going to stay long enough. And even after it falls off, uh, the fly will catch you many, many fish. Even when it everything falls off, it will catch fish. So, what I usually like to do with this fly, how I like to fish it, I like to extend the lead, leader. Uh, oh, sorry, I like to extend tippet. And I like to use it like probably a broad length or even rod than half length, depending on the spot depth. Uh, I'm just gonna cover with black marker the thread. I like the black. I prefer black to all that here. So what I was saying, I need to use uh, for deep holes. I use like over uh, like any logic longer I'm using a longer tippet like so but it follows the logic of like 1.5 depth of the spot so if the spot is three meters I use 4.5 tippet and that's it uh, now using the same thread I reattach it here and try to go as deep is uh, in these gaps as you can uh, because if you don't go as deep and if you don't use enough force later everything can get loose so just go strong with this. Now, try to create, I'll show you now, to try to create here a flat spot for tying in the legs. Uh, creating flat spot will provide you with a solid foundation for, the, for those legs. And then I'll just let me find those legs. Okay, they are, they are, there they are. So rubber, round legs. I'll just tie them in like I saw some guy doing it. So fold like two of them and I just place both of them like so. And I'll do just one more or two reps, but not too tight. Now, you can cut those legs to length immediately and you should like so and like so. 
and then just take one pair of legs and slide it to the other side of the hook. Well, I used probably too much pressure, so just unwrap, unwrap one side. Uh -huh. Okay, so okie dokie. No, it's okay. Reattach. Now, you have set your legs and then without too much tension, if you put too much tension, they will jump on. If it's not too much, they will just be perfect. So, before locking everything, attach some more dubbing here. Now, I had to explain like how I use this. So, I was saying about tippet. So, it's 1.5 lengths of the depth of the spot where I'm fishing usually uh, and then just let it sink let it sink as much as you need so you need to cast sometimes a little bit further up which means that sometimes you need well most of the time you need to use the weight of the fly instead of casting proper uh, proper fly casting with this I mean this is supposed to be used for urinimping, so you would use uh, weight of the fly sometimes to do cast. Almost never you use your leader to cast. That's at least what I do. Now move your legs away. Do two whip finish knots. Or three or whatever. Or varnish them if you want. I like the transition of black onto the pink one. So let me finally finish. Sorry guys, I don't have a script for this, so sorry if I'm like not making perfect sense sometimes. So what I what I usually do when I fish this, I cast as far upstream as I can to let this thing sink below all those fast currents that are near the surface. So when everything goes down deeper, the bottom part of the river is usually much slower than the top part of the river so you need to give life to this fly because down there it's probably the water is standing still so what you need to do is you need to pull and strip a little bit that's why this thing has legs they have function they will create slight vibrations and the fish will recognize this as, as the food so you need to let it sink down and the reason why I'm using like super long tippet and a super thin leader if I can is there are two reasons actually for that uh, one is to prevent the drag from those upper currents that, which are faster and which will push into the leader and the other one is just uh, it's easier to cast thinner leader and thinner tippet with these flies than if you use thick one then the, the weight of the fly is not uh, so heavy enough to pull everything away from you so that would be it uh, that's how I would uh, fish it so cast it, let it sink, and then just slowly strip it and put your rod tip like almost and in the water, like not almost, put it in the water and then strip like you would strip a streamer, just shorter strips. Sometimes just uh, folding your fingers, you don't do it with rips, wrist or you do it with wrist, like just change, you will see what works. Usually those fish are not so picky down there, they would eat more or less everything. And that's why you can use like big fly, heavy fly, whatever you need. Rarely you will need some delicate flies like size 20 or something, even though it's not impossible, it happens. So guys, uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you liked it, you find it useful. If you did, please subscribe, uh, like it, share it, comment down below and see you next time.